If you were a young girl in the late 1970s and early 1980s, you probably remember playing with a line of dolls called Strawberry Shortcake and Friends. This iconic 1980s line of toys was produced by the toy company Kenner. The line featured five and a half inch dolls with fruity themes, colorful cloth and vinyl clothing, and sweet fruit and berry fragrances. In addition to the dolls, there were numerous accessories, which included various fruit and berry themed vehicles and houses. The line also included other playful garden and bakery style structures. The toy line was massively successful and Strawberry Shortcake and her friends were soon featured on many different forms of merchandise. This merchandising included bed sheets, curtains, clocks, and lamps. It also included cups, waste cans, board games, books, and so much more. This colorful diminutive little girl and her happy world of friends was also featured in several animated television specials. The character and toys were incredibly popular at the time and became the girl's toy and merchandising equivalent of Kenner's contemporary Star Wars toy line. This line of toys and its colorful line of characters has been relaunched several times throughout the last few decades. For the moment, we are going to focus on the original line of toys and products and save a discussion of later iterations for another video. The World and Story of Strawberry Shortcake like many children's toys and characters in the early 1980s, Strawberry Shortcake lived in a generally peaceful bucolic setting called Strawberry Land, where she commonly interacted with her friends in a very anthropomorphic natural world. The flowers and trees have faces and expressions and occasionally interact with the inhabitants and characters. The character and her friends appear to be quite diminutive in stature as they are often depicted living in and utilizing normal human-sized objects as houses, appliances, and other structures. They also use snails, butterflies, and other such garden-type animals as vehicles and beasts of burden. This kind of setting was popular for children's shows and products in the early 1980s. This is evidenced by contemporary products such as the Smurfs, the Littles, the Snorks, the gummy bears, and many other little people themed kits, products, and shows of the time. While usually depicted as being diminutive, it is difficult to pinpoint the actual size the character is supposed to be in relation to the world around her. She and her friends are often depicted as having small pets, such as dogs and cats. These animals are in relative size and proportion to the characters as their real world counterparts are to full size humans. At the same time, she is often seen riding on the back of a butterfly or a cart pulled by a snail. Is the butterfly giant or is she tiny? It is never directly mentioned. To complicate matters, the characters can be depicted living or working inside a strawberry at one point and then picking much more regular size or proportion strawberries in another or sometimes living in a strawberry while eating strawberries in regular proportion to her and the inhabitants. Are we supposed to believe that this is a magic world where regular sized strawberries exist alongside gigantic, structurally sound strawberries and both are utilized as a food source and a source of shelter from the elements? The answer is yes. Yes, we are. And the popularity of the toy line shows that it all works out fine in the end. Nonetheless, the world that Strawberry Shortcake inhabits can be described as a bucolic fantasy setting with diminutive or little people and agrarian tropes throughout. Life for Strawberry Shortcake and her friends is heavily themed around living with and being part of nature and is strongly influenced by the 1970s concept of living simply with the land and the local community. Strawberry Shortcake herself is identified as both a gardener and a farmer tending to the strawberries in the land in which she lives. This concept of living in harmony with nature and the land seems to have heavily influenced the character and toy line. 
This is especially true in the early days of the product, as the theme for her animated television show implores one to learn the way of Little Miss Strawberry, and then you too will know. What enlightenment you will receive, or what you will know, is not expressly described. She can only show you the path, but it will be you who will have to walk it. Like a little red-haired, berry-scented Yoda, she will implore you not to forget your failure in the cave, which is likely a food-themed cave. In fact, Little Miss Strawberry even speaks in a certain way, called berry-speak, which replaces words that rhyme with berry with the word berry. An example would be that instead of wishing you a very good day, she would wish you a very good day. References to berries and fruit in relation to the individual characters is a common theme, especially in the early iterations of the toy line. But this would eventually broaden to many food-based themes that were not necessarily just fruit related. Each character in Strawberry Shortcake World is based on a fruit, berry, or food item, and this is usually reflected in the character's clothing and accessories. But most importantly for the toy product, the fruit or food characterizes what was associated with the scent or fragrance associated with that character. For instance, the titular character of Strawberry Shortcake is not just themed on the popular and well-known Strawberry Shortcake dessert dish, but on strawberries in general. She, as the theme for her animated television show states, lives in a cake made of strawberries, works and plays in a cake made of strawberries, and indeed games and chores in a cake made of strawberries. Well, that's where she lives, wouldn't you know? It should be noted that she lives in different structures across different media and during different times. On many of the American greeting cards, she is often shown living in a giant strawberry instead of a shortcake. This strawberry theme is further identified with this particular character's colors, red, white, pink, and green, which is the primary colors of anything having to do with strawberry shortcake and is iconic to the character and the toy line itself. This theming goes far beyond strawberries though. Every character has a fruit or food theme that exemplifies and identifies them, a sort of color and icon based leitmotif of sorts that extends to everything associated with that particular character. Another example is Strawberry Shortcake's friend, who goes by the name Blueberry Muffin. As you can guess, everything in Blueberry Muffin's repertoire is based on not just Blueberry Muffins, but blueberries themselves. Everything associated with this character, down to the color of her hair, will be splashed in blue, white, and green. We can get deeper into this fruit and food theming when we cover each of the characters that make up Strawberry Shortcake's world. Most of the inhabitants of Strawberry Land seem to not only spend much of their time frolicking around this verdant garden setting, but also seem to spend a lot of time baking and cooking in general living off the land, it would seem. In fact, the theme of baking or cooking is also a constant in Strawberry Shortcake land. Strawberry Shortcake herself seems to be a baker of sorts by trade and is often depicted as operating a bakery, having special recipes, or involved in baking contests. But this baking theme seems to have a darker, more sinister side in this world of berry people and garden products. It seems that all cannot be perfect in this berry-laden Eden. For then, we would not have the conflict that can lend itself to play patterning. Enter then the main villain of the toy line, the Purple Pie Man of Porcupine Peak. The Purple Pie Man of Porcupine Peak was a bad guy that lived on the edge of Strawberry Land in a tower created of full-size kitchen wares. While he was a spindly adult with a handlebar mustache, it appears he was still small in stature and one of the elves or little people that made up the inhabitants of the land. 
He was always causing trouble for Strawberry Shortcake and her friends by trying to steal the berries of the land or Strawberry Shortcake's recipes or defeat her in baking contests. While his exact motivations changed throughout the years, it seems that he sought fame and fortune through his baked products. Unfortunately for him, it does not seem that he was either a good baker or a good schemer. In contrast to Strawberry Shortcake and her friends, he was focused on metal inventions and creations and lived in a far more industrial setting on Porcupine Peak. He had access to crow-like pets called berry birds who served as helpers and spies in his machinations and schemes. His weakness was Strawberry Shortcake's berry talk and he could be manipulated to end his schemes by the use of it. A fool and a bumbler, his schemes inevitably failed, but he never learned his lesson and was back to his scheming by the next show, book, or berry-themed entry. Eventually, the Purple Pie Man would be joined by his accomplice in crime, the female character, Sour Grapes, who, along with her pet snake, Dregs, attempted to help the Purple Pie Man achieve his fame and fortune so she could get a little piece of the pie herself. She had the ability to create an unearthly and ear-splitting yodel that would stop people in their tracks and was also the second biggest weakness of the Purple Pie Man. Theirs was an uneasy alliance at best and they often fought with each other leading to their plans to go further awry and create a weakness that Strawberry Shortcake could exploit to ultimately achieve victory and save the inhabitants of Strawberry Land. It appears that she took up residence in the Kitchenware Tower on Porcupine Peak and continued to live there with the Purple Pie Man throughout the life of the toy line. Strawberry Shortcake's world is not necessarily limited to just Strawberry Land. She herself travels to different areas of the world, including other fantasy fruit themed lands such as the Big Apple City and more mundane places such as Mexico and London. In these lands, she meets new friends and they often come back with her to live in Strawberry Land. We witness that these other lands not only utilize bug and critter based transportation, but also features cars and other vehicles appropriately sized to the tiny inhabitants. Finally, we must discuss Mr. Sun. Mr. Sun, an anthropomorphic sun with a face, is the semi-omnipotent narrator in Strawberry Shortcake's animated tales. But Mr. Sun is not a detached power, not at all. He will often intervene to warn Strawberry Shortcake of problems and issues. And Strawberry Shortcake can often ask him for direct intervention, such as making a flower grow so she can escape a trap. He could even summon an army of living trees to take down the Purple Pie Man's tower at Porcupine Peak. Unfortunately, none of these tree warriors or Mr. Sun himself were included in the toy line. We have to accept that. As the toy line moved on and quite late into its run, a good fairy was introduced to the world of Strawberry Shortcake. Berry Princess was a Good Witch Glenda style magic princess of the Berrykins. The Berrykins were a late attempt to add transforming berry to child baby toys that lived alongside other inhabitants of Strawberry Land. She and her Berrykins would only appear in one animated episode at the very end of the toy line's run. Over time, and as the product evolved, the character and her world developed to reflect changing aesthetics. Strawberry Shortcake's world became less and less naturalistic and simplicity based, and Strawberry Land became less whimsical and anthropomorphic. The trees and flowers lost their faces, and the characters interacted less and less with their magical world. Large critter and bug based transportation is slowly replaced by motor vehicles and even the structures and houses lose more and more of the giant food base aesthetic and develop into slightly berry themed and decorated structures. Strawberry Shortcake herself will eventually move out of her Strawberry Shortcake house and berry patch to live in a Barbie style mansion with berry themed trim. 
By the last of the animated specials, we see Strawberry Shortcake dancing to pop-style music with neon lights in the background. This is a trend that would continue into the many newer iterations of this character over time. Strawberry Shortcake's original run would wind down by the mid-1980s and her products would almost totally disappear from the shelves by 1986. It would really be over a decade before another true effort to reboot the product line would commence. The original version of Strawberry Shortcake would stay treasured in the hearts of many throughout their lives. This has been a relatively quick and concise overview and introduction to the Strawberry Shortcake world. In future episodes, we hope to discuss the Strawberry Shortcake toy line in depth, including the characters, the merchandise, the product history, the animated series, the many iterations of the character, and finally, the future of the Strawberry Shortcake product. If you like these memories of the little things, please subscribe to stay in touch with future content. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you will continue along as we attempt to understand the way of Strawberry Shortcake and gain a full understanding of her berry-filled adventures.